Welcome to the Strategic Management Accounting course, where we teach the value-adding steps and processes necessary to execute strategy. Whether you are just starting up or looking to grow your business, then this course is for you. With your host, Dr. Neil O'Connor. What I want you, what I want to take you through some of the learning, where you're up to, and how you can get to the next stage that's meaningful for relating back to the theory and also relating back to real practice. Just first of all, with the scorecard game, we first introduced you to this notion of S, M, and S. And I said, oh, you play the game, you're really going to really understand what systems thinking is about. But then some of you start to realize that, oh no, uh, the market that we were selling to is now crashing and burning and we keep on getting fired and then you realize that oh we need to change markets now okay now in that before we did that process on Tuesday we actually did understand a bit more about what we meant by system thinking and the system thinking is, is basically connection so if we want to hire someone just repeating what I did very very quickly on Tuesday if we want to hire then maybe we have to train too because what we want from that person is productivity and productivity in terms of being able to have an intelligent conversation with a customer. It's great to have bodies on the ground in the shop, but if they don't know anything about the product or how to talk to a customer, then it's not very helpful, is it? Okay, you can understand. So that was Tuesday. So basically, that, that is the first introduction that we gave you system thinking. It's about keeping a balance. Because if you did too much of hiring and not training, then productivity went down. Okay, or the other way around. But, or you were safer to do less hiring and do more training. And you had even a better chance to do, have a productive workforce. Okay, so then that spilled over into, then we thought, okay, if we can have productive clientele, then that can help affect the lead time. Some of you look at that in the internal process measurement. Lead time, which can also affect the service backlog okay now at the time you were playing on Tuesday and probably today you sorry totally focused on how do we get to 17 how do we get to 17 how do we get to 17 all right so we're going to help you get to 17 but just bear with me as we go what I'm trying to highlight is that wow there are measures there that can help you just have much more visibility over the system <gasps> what do we mean O'Connor keeps on talking about the system here, but the system is not enough for us to get to quarter 17. Are you with me here? It's not enough to know the system. We, now, what I've just introduced you to, the notion of measurement. You need measures to give you feedback. How do we know that we are in making the right decisions here? Well, we have measures of productivity. How do we know that we are doing better on the service backlog? Well, we can measure lead time and make sure, which is kind of like an input to the backlog. If we have better lead time, then we can manage the backlog. In some ways, the backlog is kind of the outcome of a poor process. If you have poor lead time, the backlog gets larger and larger and larger. You control the lead time rather than the backlog. The backlog is kind of the result. Are you with me here? And so what you're going to learn next week when we start to look in measurements, this is kind of like the process and this is kind of like the output. Ah, more about that next week. Because what I've just talked about then for the last 90 seconds is this notion of measurement. Ah, it's starting to come in. And we're going to, we're going to spill over into next week. Remember next week, we're going to really get into measurement. Okay, and then some of, all of you are starting to ask now, well, what about this lonely person up here? It's called strategy. Okay, maybe we'll call it Steve. Okay, strategy Steve. Let's give it a name, all right? So, is very lonely up here because it seems like O'Connor's giving a lot of attention to M and S down here, right? But what about strategy? Well, you need all. Here's the big question I have for you. The game, as I introduced it to you on Tuesday, was all about you. Just, I want to challenge you and I wanted you to just to stumble into this thing that you don't know about. What is it that you don't know? 
it is the system. You don't know about the system. The equivalent of the system in the game is the program. How many of you know the program of the game? Put your hand up. How many of you would like to know the program of the game? Then you can optimize every decision. You get perfect results. Hands up. You understand what I'm talking about here? Ah, you, right? So now because I'm not going to tell you what the program is, Ah, so then you've got to do the second best. What's the second best solution? Ah, is there some way of getting some visibility on the program? <gasps> yes, there is. And that's why we use measures. Measures provide visibility over the system that we can't see. Are you, class, are you, are you with me here? I want you, I'm taking you through the logic of the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Are you with me here? Like this is the big outcome I want you to have. It's not about winning the game. It's about really understanding that you need strategy, you need measurement, you need to understand the system thinking, you need all three for a perfect balanced scorecard implementation. All right. So measurement and system thinking, they go together, right? Measurement provides a visibility of the system you don't see. And there's an example here, uh, productivity, measured lead time, measured backlog. And I know, how many of you crashed and burned because the backlog went out of control? <coughs> Come on, put your hand up. I saw some of you on Tuesday. Yes, I know. The backlog gets too much. Customers get angry and yeah, bye. <laughs> See ya. All right, please just stick to the knitting, okay? Now, let's keep going here. What about strategy? Now, what is, what is strategy? How is it different from the system? Let me ask you a simple question I asked to one group earlier. Which one do you have control over? Do you have control over the system or strategy? Strategy. Why? Why would you have control over strategy and not the system? And when you say you have control over the strategy, what do you mean? How do you, if you have control over strategy, what does that mean in this game? What, is the stra what are the two different strategies that you have? Pardon? Techie or GM. Yeah, techie or GM. And who are techie and GM? Who are they? They are? Custom, yes, and that's it. So maybe we can put with Steve, we've got little C, okay? Let's call it Colonel Steve, Colonel. You know, like Colonel Sanders? We'll call it Colonel Steve. To know that whenever you think about strategy, you mustn't forget about customer, all right? Strategy is about the customer. That's all, all right? Think, keep, keep it simple. I know, look, you can go do all the courses you like in strategy, but at the end of the day, it's Who's your customer and why are they buying from you? That, if, you don't, if you can't answer those questions, your strategy is head knowledge and not real transferable knowledge, okay? All right? You've got to know the customer, why are they buying from you. Ah, then you realize, many of you are starting to realize now, at the strategy level, we go, when we started, we had GM here. We had techie here and GM here, remember? We started here, you started going through the quarters and then you got to a stage where, oh, wow, the uh, techie share or the growth of techie, because how do you know it started falling off the cliff, right? And uh, Gilbert, you asked a great question before. How do we know in real life when the techie starts to fall off the cliff? Well, let me give you a hint. It's either S, M, or S. So how do you know in real life? Which one of those do you think? Measurement. Yeah, the measurement. If you can have measures. And look, some companies pay lots of money to consultants to give them that feedback. Those consultants do the measuring. It doesn't mean you have to have the measures inside your organization. You with me? Are you with me here? All right. So the practical matter of the fact is you can outsource measurement. All right, pay consultants to give you that feedback so you know when your market is changing. How fast is it changing? Do we need to change sooner? Are you with us here? All right, so measurement gives us, give, so what did I say earlier? Oh, measurement is really, you know, they're going out together. They're like, uh, you know, they're dating. Measurement is dating uh, uh, system thinking here and strategies on all alone. But now, the last 180 seconds, I was just telling you, wow, strategy needs measurement. Strategy needs measurement because measurement gives visibility about the customer changes. You with me? Are you with me here? Okay. So therefore, 
now strategy and measurement are dating. They're together. They need each other. Okay, measurement needs strategy. Me strategy needs measurement. All right, measurement need measurement does not exist on its own. Measurement either provides visibility on system thinking, the system, or it helps in giving feedback for the strategy. You with me? It's one or the other. Okay, all right. So keep that in mind. Um, measurement needs one or the other, and either the systems the system will exist on its own. The strategy that you want to control. You need measurement to help work out the timing. Okay, so let's go to the next stage here. Let's go to decision making because applied to real life, we've got to make decisions, right? Let's make it easy. Let me give you a two dimensional decision making framework. The first dimension is timing. Okay, you know that, don't you? The second one is, and we're going to come back to some of these here G O A L, right? Let's so far, what are we doing? So far, did I tell you we're going through these? Basically, we're, we're kind of, you know, we've nearly fully explained what's going on here with me and the SMS. Are you with me here? Us? Okay. All right. But, but we're going to cover some of the GOAL, and if we don't cover all that today, we're going to cover the rest of it on Tuesday. Okay. So let's get, let's go, let's get, get to the good stuff of decision making. Timing. What is the other dimension of decision making? M -m 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 no, 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 no. It's another one, all right? I like M words. Magnitude. Magnitude. Let me give you a real example, okay? When you made hiring decisions, is that just timing or magnitude or both? It's both, right? Because do you, timing is do you do it in quarter one, two, and three, or maybe you do it in all or one or not the other? Okay. Magnitude is how many do you hire, how many do you fire? You with you with me here? Okay. So in terms of um, a hiring, firing decision is timing and magnitude. Ah, now that's our first example of what we mean when we're talking about uh, when we're talking about O. O stands for what? On time decision making. You with me on this? Okay, that's the bottom dimension. What does A stand for? A a a accuracy, which we're trying to refer to in some ways the magnitude. You with me here? Ah, so now we're starting to get some visibility on what does O mean, what does A mean. You with me here? Okay, all right. Uh, the balance scorecard really contributes to these two in a very strong way. Okay, that's all. These are the decision making features. Uh, at any one point in time of the balance scorecard, okay? You with me here? All right. Learning is more long term, okay? You get to learn. You can you get to make decisions by the gut feel. You with me here? You know, someone's been in the industry for 20 years. They don't need to look at the scorecard to know what decision to make. You with me? Because learning is kicked in. Are you okay? And goal alignment. G at the bottom is more the people in the organization, they're under this framework. Remember the coffee shop? So if the dominant role of the coffee shop is to give a good customer experience, at least now we know everyone that's working for that coffee shop has that role. Even though they're just making the coffee, they've got to make sure that they give the customer a good feeling of how they're being served and things like that. Are you with me here on that? So uh, what we did last Tuesday and the week before was when we, we use the strategy map and the process of getting uh, group engagement in developing the map was part of the goal alignment. So everyone sees where the role is, everyone understands that this is what we're doing here, okay? And so we don't have those control costs of chapter five, which is negative attitudes. You with me? All right, we want to overcome that. How do we do that? By getting everyone to pitch in and suggest how we should do things, all right? So we're going around that, okay? So very quickly, magnitude and timing, very good. Both of these, one and two, we're talking hiring. All right, that's great. Now what about the strategy decision in this case? Is it magnitude timing? Is it only timing? Is it only magnitude? Let me repeat and let me go back. What is the strategy decision you have to make? You're currently making Oracle, is that right? So what's the decision? Stop making Oracle and start making 
Mr. Softy, right? In ease of use. Remember I told you right at the start, let's not go on granular degrees of one product or another. It's either one or the other, right? So therefore the magnitude decision is dichotomous. It's, there's no magnitude. You with me here? You with me? So the strategy decision, you don't have to worry about this. Strategy is down here. Okay. In some ways it's very easy. You only have to work out when do you actually change strategy. When do you actually start, programmers, start, stop, stop. Okay, and start doing this new software. You with me? But you've got to be careful here. You don't just, if you talk to Ken, which, uh, this is real world stuff now. Ken at Premium Soft, he would never tell the, his programmers halfway through programming to stop doing that and start doing another program. Number one is wasted all that programming work, right? Number two, the programmers will be peeved off, right? Because programmers get their own sense of completing something they work on. And I'm pretty sure that they wouldn't stay around for long. Okay, that's the real world why you want to wait until the version is finished, then you can change the strategy. You with me? So, not every quarter is a version completed in the game, right? Remember? Da, 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 da. Remember? There's a version 1, then version 2, then version 3, right? They're the only times that you could really make this dichotomous decision of strategy. So, which version release do you actually change strategy? It turns out to be close enough to what? Release number? Hands up for two. It's hand, yeah, close enough to version two. If you wait to three, then your customers are underwater. Okay? And the market share, you're, you're going to die. If you wait to at one, you're not going to make, you're not going to make the, what do you call it? Um, you're not going to make the profit requirements that the CEO wants you to make in the first uh, three quarters. Okay, that 20% return. Okay, all right. So there's your, there's your hiring decision. It's a two-dimensional thing. Strategy, it's one-dimensional in this case. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're doing strategy. Now, number three. First, first thing I told you about, number one was the system, right? Okay, uh, number, two, number two was about the decision making. Two, decision. Okay, think about it. When you make decisions, timing, magnitude, all right? What, what is giving you feedback about, on these dimensions? It is the, it's measurement. Wow, this is, isn't this amazing? We're gonna do measurement next week and suddenly you're gonna come into class next week and think, wow, now I know, now I, now know why I need to understand measurement, all right? Because it's so important for decision making. See, I'm taking you backwards. Whereas I could have said, oh, this is how you implement measures. Then why do we have to do this? All right, no motivation, right? But I'm, giving, I'm doing the why first, okay? If you can get put good measures in, then you make better decisions. So then the question is for next week, okay, oh, I'll get that, oh, can I get that? Can you just hurry up and stop talking for so long? Um, if we know that measures are good for decision making, so next week just tell us, so how do we put measures in? Well, wait for next week and I'll tell you how to do that. Okay, you're with me on this, all right? So that's what we're doing next week, the measurement next week. Now, last thing, once you change strategy, remember the first strategy was you had to have good customer service, stick to the knitting, right? The second strategy, suddenly you stop making Oracle, you start making Mr. Softy, right? And now you're selling to general managers who actually need hand, they need help. They need consultants. And the best analogy of consultant for this game is something like AC Nelson. So I know many companies, they go into China for the first time, they employ consultants, even my associate, Silk Road Associates, to go and do some market research. So they know where should they go into China? How do they set up? What features are customers looking for? Are you with me here? All right, so that's what we mean by market research consulting and that's what is operating in this game. And the big question for you is that, okay, you know you need consultants, but the question is, again, the timing and the magnitude. Are you with me here? Ah, so how do you know when do you, when do you, do, when do you have consultants? Do you wait till after the version is released? Or do you start 
engaging consultants as soon as you decide, oh, we've got to change from high power to ease of use. Which one? Immediate. Immediate, as soon as you change. And why, why is that important? You need them to develop ease of use. Yes, so the part of the consultant is actually helping the programmers to know what features of ease of use features need to be programmed in. You with me here? So it's not just like a strategic market consultant, it's also product consulting. You with me? And so that's you need to start employing consultants immediately you change from ease of use, immediately you change to ease of use. Okay, so again, we've got another decision, hiring, um, magnitude and timing, and the big question is, uh, when do you have consultants? So now you've got measures, so you've got decision, consultants, well, consultants also have, uh, they, they also produce ideas, and there's measure for that, and productive ideas okay for the and then that's going to lead to lead time which is under the process base and then that's going to lead to backlog too you with me here okay so again when you had one strategy this system the first strategy was this system operating Hello? No, but what's this system there? The system's always there. You just didn't switch it on. Are you with me here? Are you with me? Because you changed strategy, suddenly, okay, now the system is on. Okay, you turned it on. You've changed channel. You've changed to a new channel. Are you with me? So now you've got to learn a whole new system. You don't control the system. The system's already there. You've got to learn the system, not control the system. Are you with me? If you learn the system, then you can optimize it, optimize it by making the right decisions. You see, when you first started, here's your first system. You with me on that, all right? But because you change strategy, which you control, you're actually moving across to a new system. And now you've got to learn this. You with me? Ah, so this is, isn't that interesting? Why we've got L for learning? Class, you with me here? There's L. It's there, okay? It's very critical. Learning is so critical. Once you, you control strategy, you don't control the system, okay? Because you, you control strategy because you decide, oh, I don't want to sell to this customer segment. I want to sell to a new customer segment. Well, the, all the system linkages and how you maximize value to that customer are totally different. So now you've got to learn a new system. Okay, let me just stop there, have a break, come back and try your last very best to play the game. Okay? Thank you. So when will magnitude come into play? Because when will magnitude come into play? Because we so choose how many. No, an example is yeah, do you hire five at a time? Two at a time? If you hire too many, then Okay, there's a system there that actually may make it suboptimal. Okay. Instead, you may have to hire just two at a time, two at a time, two at a time. Uh, or the other option is, oh, oh, we need 15 consultants. Okay, just let's hire 15, right? But you can try both and see what works. Because you don't know the system at the time you're doing that, right? You're learning. But you can think through this just to help you in the if you have 15 at a time then it may be that you have a communication blockages because you've got so many consultants working for you but if you hire them gradually you can integrate and actually max optimize their ideas and communication in the organization well that's yeah but that may be, that system may be programmed into the game or maybe not but you can see that makes sense right right uh, can you borrow your laptop because my computer just died? Sure. I thought you were using it. I like, I like Fadilla's response. Cannot. <laughs> <laughs> and no, very polite cannot, so it's alright. Okay, it's alright. Okay.